Oh, hello. You caught me right in the middle of my literature. How rude of me. Anyway, today we have for you a restaging of Act 2, Scene 4, from Shakespeare's As You Like It. Now, we had to audition hundreds of contestants to find these five magnificent actors and actresses. First off, we have the wonderful Sherry Carter playing the role of Rosalind. Secondly, we have Sebastian Rubenstein playing the role of Touchstone. Thirdly, we have the seven-time Oscar-winning Jeremiah Briggs playing Celia. I don't know how we got him, honestly. Fourthly, we have Liza Curcio playing Corin, And lastly, we have myself playing Silvius. In this restaging, Rosalind, Touchstone, and Celia play the role of slaves trying to escape from the south to the north. And Corin and Silvius play the roles of Quakers who try to convince these three to buy land. Now please, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh, Jupiter, how weary are my spirits? I care not for my spirits, if my legs were not weary. Pray you bear with me, for I can not go no longer. I could find in my heart to disgrace my man's apparel and to cry like a woman, but I must comfort the weaker vessel, as doublet and hose ought to show itself courageous to petticoat. Therefore, courage, good Eliana. For my part, I'd rather bear with you than bear you, yet I should bear no cross if I did bear you, for I think that you have no money in your purse. Well, this is the North. Aye, now I am in the North, the more fool I. When I was at home, in a better place, but travelers must be content. Aye, be so good, Touchstone. Look who comes here, a young man in an old and solemn talk. That is the way to make her scorn you still. Oh, Corin, that thou knewest how I do love her. I partly guess, for I have loved ye now. No, Corin, being old, thou canst not guess, though in thy youth thou wast as true a lover as ever sighed upon a midnight pillow. But if thy love were ever like to mine, as sure I think did never man love so, how many actions most ridiculous hast thou been drawn to by thy fantasy? Into a thousand that I have forgotten. Oh, thou didst that never love so heartily. If thou rememberest not the slightest folly that ever love did make thee run into, thou hast not loved. Or if thou hast not sat as I do now, wearing thy hair and thy mistress's praise, thou hast not loved. Or if thou hast not broke from company, abruptly, as my passion now makes me, thou hast not loved. Oh, Phoebe! 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 Alas, poor Quaker, searching up thy wound, I have by hard adventure found mine own. And I mine. I remember when I was in love, I broke my sword upon a stone, and bid him take that for coming a night to Jane's smile. And I remember the kissing of her battler, and the cow's dugs that her pretty chopped hands had milked. And I remember the wooing of a peace god, instead of her, for whom I took two cods, and giving her them again, said with weeping tears, Wear these for my sake. We that are true lovers run into strange capers, but as all is mortal in nature, so is all nature in love mortal in folly. Thou speakest wiser than thou art ware of. Nay, I shall ne'er be ware of my own wit till I break my shins against it. Jove, Jove, this Quaker's passion is much upon my fashion. And mine, but it grows something stale with me. I pray you, one of you question yond man. If he for gold will give us any food, I faint almost to death. Holly, you Quaker! Peace, fool, he's not thy kinsman. Who calls? You're better, sir. Else, are they very wretched? Peace, I say. Good even to you, friend. And to you, gentle sir, and to you all. I prithee, shepherd, that if love or gold can in this desert place buy entertainment, bring us here where we may rest ourselves and feed. Here's a young maid with travel much oppressed and faints for succor. And wish for her sake, more than mine own, my fortunes were more able to relieve her. But I am shepherd to another man, and do not shear the fleeces that I graze. My master is of churless disposition, and little wrecks to find the way to heaven, by doing deeds of hospitality. Besides, his coat, his flocks, and bounds of feed are now on sale, 
and at our sheep coat now, by reason of his absence, there is nothing that you will feed on. But what is this? Come see, and in my voice most welcome shall you be. What is he that shall buy his flock and pasture? That young swain that you saw here, but erewhile, that little cares for buying anything. I pray thee, if it stand with honesty, buy thou the cottage pasture and the flock, and thou shalt have to pay for it of us. And we will mend thy wages. I like this place, and I could willingly spend all my time in it. Assuredly, the thing is to be sold. If you like upon report, the soil, the profit, and this kind of life, I will your very faithful feeder be. And buy it with your gold, right suddenly.